Hey guys, my name is Ksenia, welcome to my channel. I don't think I've shown it yet on this channel, but I'm actually quite a big book enthusiast and I'm reading a lot every day. I love books and right now my boyfriend and I were traveling and we're already on the road for about two months now and so far I've been pretty good <laughs> in terms of um, controlling myself. I've been reading books on my phone, I've been um, reading the printed copies that I've taken with me and leaving them um, in some random Airbnbs that we were staying whilst I've finished them and everything was fine. But now we're in Berlin and we're staying here for a month and Berlin bookshops are amazing, both secondhand and new book bookstores. And yeah, I think I went a little bit crazy and over the last couple of weeks I've managed to purchase a total of nine books from many different shops. I thought that maybe I can show them to you and in case you're interested, please continue watching. And I'll start with the latest purchases, which happened a couple of hours ago, actually. I went to Dusman, which is a huge uh, bookshop. I think it's five floor, maybe, uh, or so, maybe four. So it's, it's huge. It has a lot of books. They are located in Friedrichstrasse, so it's pretty central. So if you are in Berlin and not sure where to go get your books, you can go there. They have uh, all the new stuff, the classics as well. You can really find something there. And the books I got there are, there are two in total. And the first one is The Idiot by Elif Batuman. Batuman? Batuman? I don't know. And it feels kind of strange to see this title because usually it's Dostoevsky who wrote The Idiot for me, <laughs> but uh, there's a book with a similar name. And the book talks about a girl who is, uh, who's gotten into Harvard, so she's pretty smart, but she still finds herself in, like, as she enters this new environment, she's not sure how it, everything works, she has many challenges. Uh, in academics, as I understand, and in, in her love life, I think, as well, or like just adulthood in general. So she basically finds herself struggling through, as I understand, most of the book. And it's supposed to be entertaining, smart, funny, um, kind of not coming of age, really, because she's already in Harvard, so she's all grown up, kind of, but still with the same vibe from what I understand. The girl's name is Celine, so we're gonna watch Celine go through many events and hopefully come out stronger on the other side. And I think it's supposed to be a trilogy, so there's a second book about her already, which uh, either, or, I think it's called Either Or, um, but I don't remember exactly. I've seen a lot of good reviews about this one, so I decided to pick it up and hopefully it will not disappoint me. And the second one is a Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, and that book that talks about uh, just a normal family who have a, um, a baby girl, Sunja, whom they love, and at the age of 15, Sunja gets, I don't know if she's raped or if it's just so happened that she gets preg uh, impregnated by a married Yakuza, and that obviously leads to a lot of troubles for the family, and they I, like they struggle and they don't know what to do. But then the hero comes out of nowhere in the face of Christian minister who is ready to um, take the girl with him. He offers her to marry him, to become his wife and to start a new life in Japan. And that's what uh, Sunja, yeah, Sunja does. And we're gonna watch her uh, also struggle, I think, in Japan, in this new hostile country that she knows not much about and she doesn't know anyone there and hopefully there's gonna be a happy ending but I'm honestly not too sure and I, I just love how the book cover looks it's pretty simple when you think of it but it's also very arty which I like and then here inside it's also beautiful so yeah this book has also been um, raved about I think by many people that I follow or just the articles I read so hopefully I'll enjoy that one as well and the next book is Life Ceremony by Sayaka Murata. And this book, honestly, I've, to be honest, I've already uh, almost finished, kinda. I think I'll maybe finish it later today. And that's a selection of short stories by Sayaka Murata. I've only read The Convenience Store Woman by her, which follows a, um, a woman <laughs> who is in her 30s, I think, and she lives um, in a pretty strange life by the, from the... Um, perspective of other people and she works in the convenience store which is also normally just something reserved for students or just as a temporary job but she thoroughly enjoys it so it's a funny and sad and complicated but also simple story about a woman who doesn't seem to fit into the society and what society perceived normal and good 
and I really and that's all, all all that I'm saying about the convenience store woman and the book I really enjoyed which I also recommend to you and because I've enjoyed the convenience store woman I picked up the life ceremony so I think it has a total of 13 stories in here some of them are really weird <laughs> others are less weird and in some stories you get a feeling of uh, as if you're reading a next season of Black Mirror kinda but in Black Mirror they've um, explore what happens with the new technology yeah here it's more about i think some um, changes in habits in traditions for example the first the opening story is a first rate material is about a bride and a groom and they're about to get married and everything's fine but the groom really hates um, products made out of people out of humans and apparently they live in a society where it's normalized and um, basically after you die you are kind of recycled, upcycled into furniture, into books, into sweaters. For example, his bride, she's wearing a sweater made out of human hair, which is kind of odd and weird, but it's normalized in this society in the book. So yeah, and they have all sorts of <laughs> conflicts because of that. And yeah, Adam talks about a strange lady who just enjoys, um, who who is obsessed with other humans' liquids, as in, you know, um, all sorts of liquids and that's pretty weird as well. Not every story that I've read so far I enjoyed immensely but at the same time it's a very peculiar book and I'm happy I picked it up and it's kind of strange but in a good way I think so I can also recommend it already. And another one is The Jackson's Dilemma by Iris Murdoch and that's a classic so I don't know if you've read anything by uh, Iris Murdoch. I've read The Black Prince and The CC or By The Sea. I think it's a C comma C, <laughs> the next, uh, the second book, um, and they are both fascinating. So I found this one in a secondhand bookshop. This is a story about um, a, also a bride and a groom, and they're soon to be married, but I think on the day of, on the wedding day or the day before, there is a strange note that um, someone finds that the bride has left, and she's also nowhere to be found, so there's going to be some strange mystery about um, around it, I think, in the book. And honestly, I once I've seen that they have Iris Murdoch, I just picked the book and I've not even read what's in there uh, because I don't care because I loved the other the Black Prince and the CC so much by her that honestly I'm I'm ready to give it a shot regardless of what the story is about. So if you read anything by Iris Murdoch, let me know if she has any books you like and maybe I can find them as well. Next one is a, a book Build Your House Around My Body. The author is Violet uh, Coopersmith and the book, um, I think Violet Coopersmith is also Vietnamese herself, I believe, but I might be wrong, so don't quote me on that. And the book follows a, it's, it's like there are two timelines in the book. First is in the 80s when somewhere in Vietnam, um, a teenage girl uh, from a well-off family, she disappears as she runs on, somewhere on a plantation, she runs away from her angry father and she just, just disappears into nowhere. And about 25, yes, 25 years later, a American Vietnamese girl um, or lady, <laughs> she also disappears from her home in Saigon. And the, the stories are supposed to be somehow connected. They're also supposed to be some kind of mystery or magic or something like that. I'm not too sure. And I've picked this, this book also in a secondhand bookshop. It's called Curious Fox, I think. And from this book, yeah, I'm hoping to just get... Uh, I'm hoping that that's going to be a page turner, basically, that, I, that it's so good that I won't be able to stop until I finish the book, but we'll see about that. And another book that I got from the bookstore, Curious Fox, is the absolute book by Elizabeth Knox. And this is just something I think... Um, I'm hoping it's not silly, honestly, because it, sound, it can be quite good, but also it can be quite bad. The story follows a girl who's lost her sister, her sister was murdered, her house was... Uh, there was a fire, I think, in her home, and she, because of the trauma, she doesn't remember much, and uh, slowly, I think she starts remembering at some point, and there was some library in her home, and the library contained the absolute book. Sorry, I had to take a technical break to close the curtain because the sun was killing me, honestly. Um, just shining bright right into my eye. Uh, but yeah, so there is this absolute book that holds secrets. I don't know if it's about the universe or just uh, some people or what it is, but this book is 
has a lot of value, of course, and it disappeared. And this girl, the little sister, she is believed to be the one who can find the book, who can locate it. But the girl is not so sure, although everyone around keep telling her that, yeah, she can do it, but she thinks that um, she's been like either followed or hunted by something. So I don't know. I hope it's going to be also an exciting story that I won't be able to put away. But we're going to see about that. Both, both those books, I had no idea about the author or the book itself before I entered the shop. So I randomly picked them up. They sounded interesting to me. So I hope they're not going to disappoint. But we'll see. Then we have Marlon James, The Moon Witch and uh, Spider King. This is the second part of a vo second volume of, I think, also it, what's supposed to be a trilogy. Yeah, it says trilogy. And the first part is Black Leopard, Red Wolf, uh, which he, um, I don't know about this book, but the previous one, the Black Leopard, Red Wolf, it was a crazy, crazy combination of I don't know if it's a fantasy really or what's the genre, how, how, how you can define it really, but uh, it's some um, new world that doesn't exist. It, it's also here and I think what's really cool about this book and the previous one is that they have the maps where they show what's where because it's, like, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to understand what's going on once you just um, start reading the book. And then the first part, there is this leopard and a wolf who are people, humans, but they can um, turn into animals, and they are on a, they are tasked to find this boy who can be the future king, and they're like just exploring this area, trying to find him, locate him, and this is just a, the book was just a crazy mix of, um, yeah, I think just a fantasy. There is a lot of Af um, African mythology, I think, that the author was inspired with that he used in the book. And there's some crazy things. There are also quite many explicit sex scenes between humans and animals, and that's odd. And then there's also a lot of magical creatures and also like fights and the interesting dialogues. So the book was, honestly, sometimes it felt like a mess, but in a good way. And the second book, the second part is Moon Witch and the Spider King, is supposed to be more linear, more kind of easy to grasp, easy to understand, to follow. So hopefully it's true. And here the book mostly talks about the uh, Sologon, uh, Sogolon, sorry, or the Moon Witch, and we, um, she's a character from the first volume as well. She's kind of like a frenemy of our main characters. She's supposed to help them, but they're also fighting a lot. But uh, yeah, here we learn more about this Moon Witch and how she became a Moon Witch, and I've read a few first pages, and as far as I understand, she had a pretty unhappy childhood. So that led her to be to become a villain, kinda, I think. If you've read the first part of this book or The Brief History of Seven Killings, I think you know that Marlon James is, I think, kind of a special author, <laughs> to me at least. Uh, he's different and I'm excited about reading this book. It's really big and heavy as well, so I, I don't know if I'm gonna... I, I really want to take it home with me as well, but it's also big, so I might end up selling it to the um, second-hand bookshop once I finish it, but we'll see. So yeah, if you read it, because I think it's uh, quite, the author is quite popular, so if you read it, let me know what you think about the book. Another one is uh, also, I think, a hit and a bestseller is Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen, uh, Franzen, and the book talks about the, um, the family in the 70s where everyone is like a character. There's, uh, I think, a son, a daughter, husband and a wife in, Ch in Chicago and they all have their own secrets, they're all seeking their own freedom, whatever it means to them, and this freedom is maybe threatened by other family members. And the book is supposed to capture just one day out of life. I'm not sure how true is that, but if it is, there are about 600 pages almost to talk about one day. I mean, um, James Joyce has done it with Ulysses already, and there's also a book by Richard Ford, The Independence Day, where it on. <laughs> It's, it talks about a few days, but it's also like a huge book, just about a couple of days. So I know it can be good and can be interesting, but I'm also a little bit scared, like how many detail is going to be in here or maybe interesting dialogues. So there's also been a lot of noise, I think, about the crossroads already. So hopefully I will enjoy it. I, I've uh, almost finished his purity book, but I have it in like a really silly small edition, which I hate, uh, which is very inconvenient to read. So I kind of just left it for the better days. 
Um, but yeah, with the crossroads, it's also big and heavy, but I'm hoping to, to start reading it soon because I've been um, debating whether I want to read it or not. For, honestly, for no good reason, just kind of wasn't sure. And I ended up buying it here in Berlin, which I'm now pretty happy about. And the last book is by Ian Banks, and it's a, the steep approach to Carbadale. And Carbadale is a um, estate, I think, yeah, of a family. And the family is rich. They've made their money with the uh, with the board game called Empire. And I think at some point they had to sell part of the shares uh, of the company because of the crisis. And now the corporation that has purchased the initial part of the shares they wanna they want to buy everything out so the family needs to decide if they're selling or not and they are all summoned to their family estate to discuss it really to see what's going on what's the best way to handle this offer and so on and from this book i'm hoping that it's gonna give me some uh old schoolish detective stories vibes where um the entire family sits in one uh, place maybe in a big living room with a uh, fireplace and they're talking over drinks and they're maybe fighting uh, I don't know but um, yeah basically I don't know much about the um, the book itself as well in detail but I'm hoping that I will enjoy it as well as uh, like I do with all the other books okay so here are the nine books that I bought the pile is pretty heavy so I'm definitely not gonna bring all the, all of them with me or carry them with me as we travel because it's unrealistic with our luggage but I'm super excited that I purchased them still and I hope I will read them all quite soon because I have a lot of ebooks saved up on my phone as well which I'm reading or listening to the audiobooks and honestly it's so annoying uh, I don't know I, I, I kind of try to just be be chill about it. I purchased the book, I've read it, I can leave it to my Airbnb host, for example, because I see she has a lot of books at her home, so she enjoys reading, I'm sure, or I can sell them to the second-hand bookshop as well, that other people can read it, but at the same time, I'm so greedy with books, like, I want to keep them all to myself, and it's such a silly trait of mine, <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to get rid of it, but it's kind of hard, but yeah, I think I'm gonna have to sell them after I read them or just leave them here. We'll see about that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little book haul. Let me know if you've been buying any interesting books or if you maybe read anything from what I've shown today and how you feel about them. So yeah, thank you so much. I hope you all have a good day and see you later. Bye-bye.